You're listening to On Fire Concerts Artist Interview Series with your host, Ron Johnson. Okay. Hey folks, it's Ron with On Fire Concerts Artist Interview Series for June, and I am here with a lady at the beautiful Willie Nelson Museum, Franz Museum and General Store. I keep forgetting that, but it's a beautiful museum if you've never been out here in Nashville. Come out here and check it out. But I am here with a beautiful young lady that's Deborah Allen that needs no introduction. Oh, and uh, we have been trying to do this for a while. <laughs> a while, yeah. First, just can I just say, it's so great to be here with you, Ron. I've seen a lot of your interviews and you do so great. And then here at the museum. This museum is amazing, you and I were talking place, about. Yeah. And, and they are so kind to us to let us do this anytime we want to, and it's just a neat place to come and do it. Very much and so, I love it. I call it Nashville's Hidden Secret. If you Like I said, if you don't know, it's here. Music Valley Drive. <laughs> exactly, it is. It's like a little hidden gem. It is, and so we have tried to get together and do this, and then uh, scheduling COVID originally. Yes. Then scheduling and then health issues I've been going through for it seemed like six years now. Oh. But the last year has been tough, but we're back. Um, well, you look good. Well, thank you. And uh, so you're you're from Memphis. I am. And that's something we have in common. I was born and raised in Memphis. Really? Where were you born in Memphis? Baptist Hospital. I was, I was, well, you were born in Elvis's Hospital. Uh, I was born in the Methodist, Methodist Hospital. That's where my mother was born in the same hospital that I was born in. Huh. My mother worked at Baptist Hospital. Did she? she was okay. Yeah. And um, but uh, and I, you know, I grew up in East Memphis, like over Summer Avenue and over yeah. in there, Berkeley yeah. and over in there. Yeah, my parents had an upholstery shop on Sun Summer Avenue. Their first one was on Union Avenue. Then they had Summer, and then they added Lamar. Yeah, and. And uh, high school in Germantown until I decided I didn't need high school no more. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, it seems like you got it figured but out. I got, well. But I got, but we did okay. And then uh, of course you went back and got all that. But uh, yeah. so, when did you decide to come to Nashville? In '83 or something? Oh no, I was here long before that. I was here when I I moved to Nashville when I was about probably 18. Oh okay. So I worked. Um, I wound up. Uh, working at Opryland the second year that it was open. That, that and, I couldn't remember when you yeah. came. I knew in 83, Baby Alive came yes, out. Yes, that, that, I worked for quite a while to, to, to earn the opportunity to get to do that. But yeah, I think it was 1972 when I showed up here in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Opryland was just so cool of a place. It a lot was. of people started there. Uh, you know, uh, when I was at Opryland, great people like Eddie Bears and Don Cook and so many great musicians uh, worked in the park, mm -hmm. you know, and then they wound up going on to be great producers and musicians. And so uh, you, you're you a, uh, and, if you, and you're gonna learn this folks, but you're an amazing songwriter. Thank you. I think you have like 2,000 in your catalog or more. Yeah, something like that. You know, I, somebody told me that one day and I thought, well, it, if, it, if that's not exactly right, it feels like it, it. It's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close. And, and of course, in 1983, we were talking about Baby I Like came yes. out. And that was just, that had to be a life changer. I mean, it, it, it really was a life changer. You know, I, I had had some songs recorded by other people right. before then, uh, you know, but just having Baby I Like. Uh, really opened my eyes up to the whole entire world. I got to do so many things. In fact, I was talking to a friend of mine, and this is actually the 40th year anniversary for Baby I Lied. It was released in uh, September of 83. I think the discography or whatever we yeah. call it was talking about all that, yeah. and you followed that up with numerous more. Yeah, we had a number one behind that called uh, I've Been Wrong Before, and just a, a lot of things. And in the 90s, I kind of had a resurgence with Rock Me. But mm -hmm. Baby I Lied was special <laughs> because I got to uh, meet Dick Clark and be on American Bandstand. And I was on Solid Gold with Marilyn McCoo. And that, that had to be all that. Dick Clark, I mean, that had to be. That had to be. It was. And what a wonderful person Dick Clark was. I, he had a big party at his house uh, one evening. Oh, Hollywood calling right now. <laughs> uh, um, Dick Clark, he had this big party out at his house in Malibu on the Pacific Ocean and his wife Carrie, she was so nice. But I mean, there were all kinds of, 
incredible artists there, you know, artists from all genres were there. And it was just so nice for him to open up his home to everybody. And I have heard that, that about, about Dick Clark. I never met, never was fortunate enough. And mm -hmm. I just think he had to be to deal with the people. Yes. He just, everybody seemed to just love Dick Clark and, and with good reason. Yeah, he really was like the world's uh, oldest teenager yeah. because he had, and I think you've got it, and I know I've got it. It's, I think it's, I think it's in the music because it just kind of keeps your, your heart young and alive it, it, with enthusiasm. It just keeps you going. And, and curiosity and just fun stuff. And another reason for Baby I Lied being such a uh, big smash was, I mean, I've seen where you got a, a BMI two million airplay. Yeah, it's a two million airplay award uh, winning song. Uh, two million airplays on radio for BMI and then it's, it's just about to hit uh, three million here too. And you had six more that did the same for a million. Yeah, a million airplay on uh, six more. And then um, I think one of those, and I can't remember which one of it, but one of them is approaching, it might be Patty Lovelace has hurt me bad in a real good way. I think that was approaching two million. That's amazing. I mean, and, and I've got a list here, but the people that have done your songs, we were talking about that you, you were the writer and, you, and to me, I mean, Fleetwood Mac and, and you know, uh, just so many people, you name them, they've done them. Yes, it's really been a blessing. A lot of that has to do with, I think as an artist, you gravitate to other artists, you know, and uh, the I have two songs recorded by Fleetwood Mac and that's because my good buddy, and you probably know him, Billy Burnett. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, his I'm daddy and his uncle, they invented <laughs> rockabilly and I'm not kidding you. Uh, Billy has a song that he wrote called Through the Walls because he used to have all kinds of great people drop by the house. In fact, he said his daddy, uh, Dorsey and Johnny Burnett, were just his uncle and his daddy, he said, we had to run Elvis off one time. He kept hanging around and we didn't want him to hear what we were doing. But, you know, so I wrote some with Billy and this was after he was with Fleetwood Mac. Right. But he still had that relationship there so he played them songs that we wrote and they cut to level. It was just, uh, it's amazing because, um, the, like I said, the, the list of who's who and country music recorded, as well as others. Yeah. And, I mean, as a, I'm not a writer, so as a songwriter, when you write a song, it's got to be mine. You gotta, you gotta give it a lot of thoughts sometimes. Do I want to throw this to somebody or pitch it to somebody or do I want to record it myself? Yeah. There's certain ones that strike a chord in your heart, you know, and especially after you sing it, you know, sometimes it's not till after you sing it that that, that you get attached right. to a song. I can get very attached to my songs, <laughs> but like when someone like Tanya Tucker or Patti Loveless right. or John Conley or people like that, Janie Fricky, you yeah. know, they want to record your song. I mean, it's like, yes, please, you know, because they're so amazing. I did not realize, and I should have known this, but I did not realize, I had John Conley recently. Yeah. And I did not realize you were a writer on uh, I'm In It For The Love. I'm Only In It For, for The Love, love. Yeah. And, and I thought, that's amazing. I just, that just, your, your writing and as, as you're singing uh, is so diverse that you, you blues, I mean, yeah, I, being from Memphis, there's a lot right. of that in there too, you know. So yeah, WDIA was just right down the street from my daddy's shop, and so was Sun Records. Yeah, you know? and you, uh, your dad, if I remember correctly, and uh, seemed like you had a upholstery shop. Yes, it was a Leon Thurman's automobile upholstery shop, the best automobile sh beauty shop in the Mid South. And I've heard you say in other interviews yeah. and, and or articles that you was on Elvis's bus. Yes, well, you know, George Klein uh, was a very good friend of mine because I used to watch his TV show. Oh, wait a right. Of course, I watched all the uh, country shows, right. but I also loved watching George's show because it was a local show. And he George, was on WHBQ or something. WHBQ. As soon as I got my driver's license, that's the first place I went. I got in my car. On Highland, if I remember. Yes, over on Highland, went straight into, um, WHBQ and audition and got the part to be a WHBQ. But by then I had already slept in Elvis's bus <laughs> because George uh, had heard and uh, from some of the guys, the Memphis Mafia, uh, 
he, he had heard that daddy did great work. And of course my mother's a designer too. Right. And um, so he said, I'm telling you, e, you need to get that bus over to Leon Thurman's upholstery shop. And so they took it over there, but the Memphis Mafia kept hanging around the shop. And um, so my daddy said, I can't get anything done. You're causing too big of a commotion here. So he pulled the bus out and brought it out to the house. And I was probably about, I don't know, three or four, however old I was, and my sister Judy, who's three years older than me, we, we wanted to camp out in his bus. So we camped out in his bus and we ate all his ice cubes. <laughs> my mother, I want to tell you, I'll let me brag on her for a minute. She, she really does have a flair for design and the interior of the bus was done in all royal blue, trimmed in gold and back on the back, uh, you know, in the star lounge where his bed was, it was blue velvet, and then she had this big gold medallion in the center part with EP on it, and he loved it. And she got a phone call one day from Elvis just saying how much she loved it and that it was fantastic. Mother I've, says, "Mother says that's his favorite word, was fantastic. I've seen uh, photos of your mom with, it, with you. Yes. And just an amazing, beautiful woman. Thank and, you. And, and, and y'all are, are, I mean, y'all are, we're very close. And, 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 and the looks are there, the similar, similar looks. Uh, so tell us, um, when you, when you to, going back a little bit, but when you first come to Nashville, you went to the Opry Lab, but did you do any writing with any of the publishing? Well, uh, not at that point yet. I, um, of course, my mentor in songwriting was Shel Silverstein who I met when I was singing at the Hall of Fame. He was amazing. He was amazing, and I, I'm so thankful that um, we became friends. And yeah, he, I said, will you uh, actually, wait a minute, let me think here. I was at a crossroad. That was after I worked at Opera Land, because you're not gonna believe it, but I didn't want to get used to getting a regular paycheck <laughs> because I wanted to make sure I challenged myself right. to follow my right. dream. I didn't know how it all threaded together, and I used to hang out a lot at Waylon Jennings' office, where my best friend, Marie Barrett. How about to say Marie? Yes, Marie, and then she later married John Hartford. But Shel Silverstein would come by every once in a while, and that's when I invited him to come hear me sing at the Hall of Fame. And, and I may be wrong, and correct me if I am, because um, it's been so it's been a few years. Marie. There used to be a restaurant or a little place out in Normandy, Tennessee. Okay. Called the River, and I can't remember the lady that was with with the Wayland at the time that was over his. Sherry Barrett. May, Sherry was Marie's daughter. May have been, but she, like anything, even after the Wayland's passed, you, if the copyrights or anything was, was going to arise, she had something to do with. Yeah, I don't know. But it's been you. It's been yeah. a long time ago. I, but that, that, that was a pretty well, amazing place to hang out because there was Captain Midnight who had his own radio show and he lived up in, in this little room up there and he had a little hot plate and he would fall asleep there and do his radio show. Kyle Lenning got his start there, you know, as an yeah. engineer and he went on to produce uh, Randy Travis and then Shell dropped in. Shell looked like a, uh, Shell looked like a pirate. <laughs> And I was like, would you come see me sing at the uh, Hall of Fame? I'm kind of at a crossroads. He goes, yeah, I'll come hear you sing. And uh, so I, I sang my set and I sat beside him and I said, so what'd you think? He said, well, I think you got a good voice. And I was like, oh boy, I'm getting ready to get discovered. And uh, so then he said, you know, there's a lot of great singers here in Nashville. And I went, oh gosh, he's gonna tell me to keep my day job. And uh, he said, have you ever thought about writing songs? I said, no, I've written poems, but never thought about that. And he goes, I think y'all think about writing songs. You can write your own style. Song is something you can keep with right. you forever. And uh, he goes, you know, the sun doesn't shine on the same dog's back <laughs> every day. Well, that did make sense to me because, uh, you know, you can't have a number one song every day. Right. But he says, besides, it'll keep you from going crazy. Uh, you know, I wish I could write, but I just can't. But it's got to be, it's got to, I can see where it, with me it would drive me crazy, but at the same time, the finished product yeah. would make you proud. It does. It does. It's, it is thrilling when you get it 
recorded and you hear all the pieces come together. In fact, to me, part of the creative process, even an extension of the song is in the studio. You know, some of the signature things start to evolve in the studio. Shell was, you know, Shell was, um, uh, Bobby Barry did a lot of Shell yeah. stuff. And then my group, uh, one of my favorite groups ever was Dr. Hook. Yes! Uh, Ray Sawyer, Dennis LaCoye, uh, yes. Nick and all them. They love, they, right. they, they were out on a shell boat, out on yeah. a, a houseboat a lot. When I first met them, I was in a studio in uh, California and uh, and Shell said, and we were at a Dr. Hook session and he called them all in there and introduced me to him. And he gave them like, he's told them a song he had on his mind, said, sing so and so. And they, they, I wish I could remember the song they sang, but they were like as close as you and I are together. And these voices all at once coming at me, I was like, oh my God. Them guys were amazing. They I, are amazing. I talked to Jay David back um, yep. a year or so ago, we were talking and uh, I was back and forth on Facebook and he mm -hmm. said, I said something, well, I don't know, it's been longer than that. But anyway, I said something about, man, it would be cool because it was before Ray passed. Yeah. I said, it would have been cool if y'all could have got back together for a reunion yes. or if you could. And he said, well, if it's going to happen, it needs to happen soon because we ain't done getting no younger. Yeah. And, but he said that Dennis, you know, he said, and, and Ray is just was a great guy. And, mm -hmm. and to me, I mean, he was always, you know, and I talked to Linda, his wife. Yeah. And, uh, but I think Dennis is overseas more than he is in Europe. He had a great voice. They were just great together and individually they were great too. Mm. So, I, I mean, I never really got to hang out with them much after that one time, but they knocked me they out. They could sing. Boy, they just knocked me out. So, one of my favorite songs, I guess, uh, the favorite songs ever actually was Don't Let Me Cross Over. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. I nearly fell off my chair there. But no, that's funny that you mentioned that because I've was i been kind of um, playing my songs on the piano a lot lately because I'm getting out and doing some different things. And sometimes I'll play with my band. Sometimes right. I just play it. But I was playing I'm Only In It For The Love and then Don't Worry About Me Baby. That was my very first yeah. number one song as a writer. I wrote that with Bruce Chanel, uh, you know, Hey Baby. Right and Kieran Kane of the O'Kanes. Okay. And uh, we were in the studio hanging out one day and it was just waiting for our turn to, we, there were several demos going on that day. And I, was, I got bored and I was like, come on y'all, let's write a song. So we start writing this song. We got it about halfway finished, but then about two days later, we went to my house and finished it. And I really wanted to record that song, really did. And I took it to my record label. At that time, I was on Capitol Records. And, um, but the person at Capitol Records said, he just, he said, you know, it, I don't know what made him think this or why he right. said this, but he said, well, it's really not cool for artists to cut their own songs these days. I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one. Say what? So it went on down to Old Friends Music because Don Gant, who was right. our favorite, um, publisher, if you wrote a song, the first person you wanted to go play it for was Don Gant. So I went down there and I was like bummed out. I said, I'm bummed out. Um, uh, I don't think they want me to record. Don't worry about me, baby. I love this song. He goes, let's listen to it. So he pops it in his cassette player <laughs> and, <laughs> and he listens to it. He goes, man, that's a hit. I said, that's what I think. <laughs> and Kieran and, and Bruce was at, were at his office that day, right. so we were all in there. And Don says, I'll tell you what, Janie Freaky's Jim Ed Norman's cutting Janie Freaky down at uh, Audio Media. Let's go. Well, he had just gotten, Don had this new Cadillac. We all <laughs> piled in his Cadillac. Man, we rolled down that road. We went up to uh, Audio Media, went through that front door, and, and Jim Ed looks around. He goes, Hey, Don, how you doing? He goes, Hey, Jim Ed. He goes, Tell you what, I got a hit for you. And he goes, well, let's just see if you do. And he turns around and he plays it. And they played it on those big luscious speakers. And he goes, he turns back around and he goes, I, I love this, Don. Janie, get in here. And so, I mean, it's very old school. I say this not all the time, but I've said it a lot throughout my life. It's like, I feel like I kind of got here on the tail end of old school. 
I'm so glad I did because I got to go to Show Bud down on Broadway. Right. I got to go to, uh, you know, Tootsie's back when it was really to Tootsie's. Tootsie's yeah. and experience a lot of that. Go to line balls, you know, and all those places. And now you see Nashville. Now, and I'm not like everything no, changes. No, everybody's over time. glad everything for the success. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's different. It is very different. If there's music coming off of the roof, coming out the doors. It's, and, it's and talking different. about Waylon, while ago, I remember going up and seeing Waylon when Waylon used to have a museum on Music Row. When Music yeah. Row was Music on the yeah, corner up right. there upstairs. Exactly. And he had Buddy Holly motorcycle in there. Buddy yeah. gave him, and uh, he had just a lot of things. But he, that was a neat building too back then. You had numerous things in there at that yeah. time. But it's a, um, it's just a, but but talking about don't let me cross over. That had to be a unique. That was, you know what, I think it worked out the way it was supposed to because I saw Janie Freaky the other night. We did that Blue Lights and Country Nights yeah. or Nashville Nights to raise money right. for the uh, first responders and the police people. Um, but I'm telling you, she's singing as great as ever. And then she went on and recorded another song of mine, uh, Let's Stop Talking About It, which yeah. went to number one also. But she sings it great, and I absolutely love her, and I still get to sing it. You know, and it's part of my show too. So I, I love it that she did it. And, you know, oh, I know, here's a funny story about that song. I was um, adding a, a room onto the house that I lived over on Estes Road. And this guy was in there, put it was a garage turned into part of the house, you know, right. so we cut through it. This guy was in there listening to the radio. No, he wasn't listening to the radio. He was laying carpet. And he was in there whistling. The melody to don't worry about me baby and i stuck my head in there and i go did you know that i wrote that song and he goes what i said you're whistling don't worry about me baby he goes yeah i love that song i said i wrote that song and i sang it to you. <laughs> i said i thought you were doing it just to be nice to me and he goes no no i love that song it's amazing how, how things you cross people yeah, such as that it is and it had to be and and i think it's you were the first person in Nashville to do an all-digital album? Yeah, or I was. It, it, it was um, my second album on RCA. It's called Let Me Be the First, which is a song we wrote with Kicks. And um, anyway, yeah, technology had advanced. Well, the first thing that I did with, that was a first was Bud Logan brought it to me. It was, I was the first, he, he brought it to me. I, I didn't right. come up with the idea. They asked me, would I like to sing on some duets with Jim Reeves. Jim Reeves. That was the first time that technology had ever been used. Even before um, Natalie Cole and Nat King Cole, that's what they tell me. And so then technology kept, you know, uh, growing. And we had been hearing about, um, Rafe and I worked a lot together and produced things together. And we were like, well, let's just do this digital thing. but. Still a little unsure. We ran it analog and digital at the same time. Let's see which one. Right? And at the end of the night, we were like, well, this is silly. Let's just do it with the digital. And so it really truly was the very first totally digital record. To and then first. everybody, after that, everything went that way. Yeah. But, I mean, Out of Nashville. They were Nashville. probably doing it in mm -hmm. L.A. But it, it, Nashville... Um, it's hard to get people to follow sometimes, but when, when they see it works. So. Oh my gosh, well it wasn't hard once the word got out that we were happy with it because uh, word got out and then Jimmy Bowen block booked the whole entire studio for the entire year. And there was one, so our friend um, Chuck Ainley, who's an amazing engineer, um, we, we knew we didn't have any extra time. Like we couldn't right. say, we need a couple more days. They, right. That was not gonna not happen. Happy. So we were working until like five o'clock in the morning. And there's a song on that album um, that I was working on. It's called, It Makes Me Cry. And it was about five o'clock in the morning. And I was out there going, it makes me cry. <laughs> and I hear outside the window, I hear, <laughs> and I open that window and go, oh no, tree surgeons. So I'd stand there holding the window up and I go, okay, okay, he's gonna stop. When I, and I get back in the room, that's how that happened. And just finished it out in between, in between cuts. <laughs> exactly, really, literally, literally in between cuts. But I mean, stories 
like that. That's what makes uh, the music business so much fun. You know, there's a lot of odds that are against you, but you know, you just persevere and keep going. I mean, but, but when you look at your, your history, and I'm thinking, you did the first digital, all this stuff, uh, the you know, the BMI awards, everything, the two Grammy nominations. Thank you. Um, and then you think, you see where well, you're the only country artist that I know of, and the and only country artist, I guess, period, that Prince produced. Well, I'm the only one that he wrote a song for and produced. Produced it, okay. Yes. I think there was one that uh, Kenny did for a movie, but I don't know, I don't know how all of that came right. about, and I don't know all of that, but I'm the only, technically, the he, wrote and, he wrote and produced that song on me. And to work with Prince, I mean, that's... Yes, just getting to know Prince and being around him was amazing. I've got enough. I could write a book on just that wonderful little fairy tale period of time. And he was a perfect gentleman, I might add. He was wonderful. He was a wonderful person. I've seen interviews with him, and and you you hear things, but then you watch the interviews and you watch what he says and and everything. And yeah. And sometimes your actions speak louder than words, and I think yes. his did. And he, he said yes. things that you think he's got to, you know, he's, I think I would have loved to have met. Yeah, you know? he was a gentle person, he was a gentle soul, and he was highly creative. And, you know, um, I was going through an executive changeover. I had gotten transferred, um, kind of like from one roster to another. and. It's sort of like being on a baseball team where they trade baseball cards. I was like a baseball card. Well, I got traded, traded. To, traded. So I thought, well, I'm just going to try to live up to this opportunity right. and just, you know, follow where my life path is going. Right. And uh, so we had, you know, I saw Prince one night at the studio because I was it was a compound. It was Sunset right. Sound. You walk across. There's a basketball court there, and I went to the ladies' room. And when I came back out, I saw basketball robot and I reached down and picked it up I figured it was going to be one of my friends yeah. and I turned around and it was Prince <laughs> I was like oh my gosh I thought you were going to be somebody else here here's here's the balls that's all I ever saw of him until when the new executives came in at Capitol they um I mean excuse me at RCA um they were in there listening in the studio and I was kind of like getting a little claustrophobic because <laughs> I knew I was being judged at right. that time, you know? So I said, I think I'll go get a cup of coffee. So I go to the kitchen, I get a cup of coffee and I'm walking back across the, um, the basketball court and I see Prince shooting <laughs> hoops in his bell bottom, silk bell bottom, matching uh, platform shoes and matching shirt. And I'm standing there beside him with my coffee cup. Oh, well, that's a good one. Oh, shoot. Oh, no, that, that was good. And I was looking at his eyelashes. I was going, gosh, his eyelashes are longer than men's gills. I mean, he was really pretty, really beautiful. It's like he, he dribbles the wall back there beside me. And I go, I like your outfit. And he goes, likewise. <laughs> that's all he said to me. All he said was likewise. And then I thought, I better get back in there with the big dogs. So I go in there and listen, I go, well, we think we can run with your album, but we think we need a couple more things. We can run with your album. So I left California and I went back to Nashville um, and I was sitting in my little booth in my kitchen. And I was just really, just really saying a prayer, you know, God, please tell me what should I do? And it was like, well, you met Prince. Prince is like one of the, if not the genius right. of our time. So I wrote him, just wrote him a letter and said, Dear Prince, my name is Deborah Allen. We met briefly on the basketball yeah. court and uh, the new executives have said that they can run with my project if I cut a couple more things. I was thinking it would be merely wonderful if we could possibly work together. So I'm, I mailed it to Coke Johnson. He was Prince's engineer. And I mailed it to the studio because that's the only place right. I knew to mail get it. To. Yeah, a couple of days later, I get a call, you know, not a couple of days, but after it got there, probably a couple of days later, I get a call from um, Coke Johnson and he said, hey, Deborah, it's Coke. And I said, well, hey, how you doing? He goes, hey, uh, Prince got that letter you wrote to him. Hmm. And I enclosed a cassette too. I said, I'm enclosing a cassette so you can see what I've been up to lately. And uh, 
He said, he's written you a song and wants to send it to you. And I go, you're kidding me. <laughs> Prince wants to send me a song. Yeah. And so I said, oh, come on now, Coke. I said, tell the truth. I said, is this a song he had already or did he really write it for me? He goes, no, I was there in the studio when he wrote it for you. So, I mean, again, I, I shouldn't even start talking about it because there's, you know, it just just kind of turned into a fairy tale that just, I don't know. And it's, an, you know, it has to be an honor to have, to have that happen. And, and, it was. And, you know, now we're at your new release mm. with The Art of Dreaming. Yeah. And there's there's a um, well there's, there's there's some good <laughs> all good songs on there but Thank you. Memphis Rendezvous mm. I, I love that song Thank and you. then I like Patsy Cline oh yeah I enjoy singing that one too yeah I was playing Pat, uh, I was playing uh, Memphis Rendezvous this morning of course you and I are from Memphis so that kind of has a special right. place in our heart because we know what we know where Memphis Rendezvous <laughs> right. is we've eaten some ribs there although this song is not about ribs <laughs> but uh, I like that because it feels, you know, it captures that mood. But I, I really enjoy singing Patsy Cline Crazy too. It's kind of like a puzzle that put together of, uh, if you love classic country music, you probably love this song yeah. because it's got some of my favorite song titles in yeah. it and certain lines from certain songs. And to put them in the order that that's in, it was amazing. I, it, I just, it, was, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And and my friend that helped me with the video, um, I, I just shot some stuff of me singing the song right. and sent it to her. And uh, she, instead of doing like a lyric video, she got real creative and she has me singing in the middle of like a 45. Right. And as the 45s go around, it has the different titles right. going around. So it's real, it's kind of, a, I say low tech looking, but in a real hip cool way. It, it gets your attention. Yeah, and, it's fun. And, and you know, it's like um, Memphis Rendezvous is like your other song that, that I've always really enjoyed was Amazing Graceland. Thank you. That, that's an awesome video and song. Thank you. That, that song, Ron, was pure inspiration because um, I lived in Nashville when Elvis passed away. In fact, I was hanging out with Marie and all everybody at um, at Wayland's office, and I remember hearing the news of Elvis passing away, and I was just devastated. And then shortly after that, I heard, you know, that they had decided to sell tickets and people could walk through Grace and I was like. That's just not right. That's just not right. That's just because I used to no. see Elvis up there all the time. We'd drive out to see my cousins, and I would see him up there riding with his friends. And he was in our midst all the right. time. We'd see him a lot, and so I just ooh, that just didn't feel right to me. I mean, I wasn't saying it wasn't any of my. I had nothing to right. nothing that I could do about it, but just as someone who loved Elvis, right. like that, I was like, wow, that's strange. So, but. Several years later, uh, I got the opportunity to perform at Graceland. This corporation, a um, friend of mine, Danny Raspberry, he had rented out the entire mm -hmm. estate. Danny is just so cool. He is. Lower Mississippi. Yep. And the home network shopping thing. And yep. Danny is a, just an amazing, amazing guy. He is, and he's a great friend. And I was down there to do a show. And it was during Christmas time, so Graceland was all lit up beautifully, and they had Elvis music playing, and um, they served us a nice dinner. And then they said, if anyone would like to take a, a tour of the mansion, get on this bus and put your headset on, and you can give yourself a self-guided tour of the mansion. And I thought, well, I guess, I guess it's been long enough. I guess I can do it. So I get on the bus, ride up there, and there's, he's singing Blue, Blue Christmas, and I'm like getting in the mood, and I get off and I walk up the steps, and as soon as I step my toe in that door, I felt the spirit just wrap all around me, and I was just like, oh my gosh. And I didn't even put the headphones on, I just started walking through the house. I, I could see, it's like I could see him and his friends all living their right. lives out in there. You know, in the living room, in the in the dining room, in the kitchen, in, in the jungle room, in all of those rooms 
and it was so real. And then I had to go do my show, so I go do my show. And then Raymond, my husband, Raymond Hicks, we were riding back to Nashville. We decided to go back to Nashville that night. And we were riding along, I said, Raymond, I still have that feeling all around me. I said, and I told him what happened. I said, I'm not kidding you. I said, it, it was just amazing. I, and I'd talk a little more and I'd say, it was just amazing. And all of a sudden I went, Amazing Graceland. Oh, Raven, hurry up, get home. I gotta write this song. It, it is an amazing song. Thank you. And, and the video and everything just, the way it was done, it was just Thank all you. perfect to that. And I just, uh, I, I, I could talk with you all day, but I don't want to tell you about it. Well, I love talking with you because, you know, you and I are from the same part of the world and we've experienced a lot of the same things. So it's easy to get lost in conversation. See, you know, there's a friend and I don't know that, I don't know if you ever knew him or not, but there was a company in Memphis for years called Memphis Furniture over off Lamar and Crow. Yeah. yeah. But my dad was blind all my life oh and my he God. and the company there gave him four restaurant four spots in there that was his. Okay. And they that was for restaurants or snack bars for the yeah. employees to come to so when I was like I just turned 18 I worked for them in the printing department okay and there was a gentleman there from my first boss who knew me all my life was Ronald McKinney okay I didn't know you. Ronald ended up being the main man under Gene Barksdale and he became security over Graceland when Elvis oh, was there oh okay and uh but it, it, it's he says that Graceland was he said you go in there when he's there or not there you get a you get a the sense it's amazing you know yes and so, but thank you so much for coming out today and doing this with me. And uh, thank you so much. I've got to say, and I told Raymond this the other night, uh, and and folks, on fire concerts and Deborah Allen will be doing something. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so, uh, I had, like I said, some health issues that I'm getting them out behind me, and then we'll we'll get back on track. Okay, I'm glad you're feeling so much there better. There was a a group that I have booked it for the end of the year, um, Chapel Heart. Oh my gosh, I love Chapel Heart. And I interviewed them, and <laughs> it was so funny because um, Danica? Yeah, she Danica. said She said, when I die and come, no, uh, she said, when I die and come back, I won't come back at Deborah Allen. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. she's so sweet. I love all three of them. Um, I was in one of their videos, uh, the one that uh, the, Billy Gibbons is the in. The church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the church. That was so much, that's when I met him. And it's like, when I walked in the door, we all saw each other and we just screamed. We're like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and we just hit it off. And then, um, well, we said we were going to get together and write. So I probably reached out to them and then we were going to get together and write. And I mean, it snowed so hard. I couldn't even get my car out of the driveway. I was gonna go buy some right. food for us down the street. And I called him, I said, I don't know if y'all are gonna be able to make it. There's so much ice on the road. I can't even get my car. I was gonna go buy us some food. They go, don't worry about it. We've got a big vehicle. We're gonna stop and get us some lunch. We're coming over to your house. And I said, okay. So they came over and we wrote a song called, uh, let's just let something happen. So. They are just yeah. so fun. Yeah, and, they are. And then they did the, you know, the Loretta before she passed, she wanted them to redo one of her songs and they did yes, Fifth City. Fifth City and, and they killed it. They, they just did, That's wow. amazing. They and, did. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to let you know, she said she wants to come back at Deborah Allen. Oh, so. that's so sweet. Well, they're, she's beautiful. Each one of them are beautiful and their harmonies are so incredible. And I was so proud of them, how great they did on the TV show. And I just, you know, their new album is called Glory Days. Right. And right. I really believe they're living in and their And that's glory a Glory days. Day tour. Yes. Uh, look at their website. But, yeah. Um, so tell the folks where they can, and I got, I keep saying one more come time, on, one on. more thing. I got time. I got to know. Okay, <laughs> come on. Um, on your website, I noticed yeah. you have Juice Plus. I do. My uncle was in Juice Plus. He was like a senior vice president, James Posey. And uh, my first company, my first, that's my mother's maiden name is Rosetta Posey. And uh, my first publishing company, I named it Rosetta. I mean, I named it Posey Publishing. But Uncle James was a big, I'd say, I always, like, if you're a senior vice president, you're a big dog. He was a big dog in Juice Plus. But man, that stuff is so good. They have one out there. It's a long story, but there was one out in Green Hills I got associated with for a little bit. Uh -huh. 
and John, I can't remember his last name, but the one that actually owned it. And uh, there was a real small percentage part or somebody else, but the, uh, it, it, my wife loved that, loved that juice. Yes. And then you have another thing on there. and I, I know the thing on TV. No, on your website. Oh, I'll tell you. Okay, okay. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, Arbon. I've <laughs> used Arbon skincare forever. My friend DC Davies, she is. Uh, I call her supermodel and a super mom. She's just gorgeous, and uh, she introduced me to it 38 years ago, and I have loved it all my life. And then, and of course, they do nutritional products too, like they have some great protein shakes and stuff. I was just seeing your website and I seen the lifestyles and I looked at it just to see, yeah. that, I thought that was cool. And well, when I'm out on the road, a lot of times people ask me questions, they're like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I go, you know what? I kind of touch on it for a second. I go, but I love it so much. If you go to my website, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll explain why I love it. And then if you want to check it out, you can. Tell them, tell everybody where they can find their brow. Yeah. Well, y'all, please go to DebraAllen.com, and that is D-E-B-O-R-A-H, like in the Bible, <laughs> Allen, A-L-L-E-N.com. And if you go there, be sure and sign up for free as a front row friend, and uh, you'll get a free newsletter occasionally. We don't barrage people with news newsletters, only when we got something right. fun and exciting going on. And also, you can connect to all my socials from there, too. And if you get a chance, be sure and connect with me on my YouTube channel, because I've been kind of lax about that. You know, we've got one, and I haven't really pushed it yeah. too much, but you, you still see the subscriber numbers, and you think, I need to push this a little more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, and then, you it's know, I, people that does subscribe, you yeah. don't even know, and you're not doing that. Then, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and, and somehow I wound up with two of them, and yeah. one of them that's not even connected to the uh, to the website is the one that has the most numbers. I go, how did that? <laughs> that's happen? what I say. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> I know. You know, but that's like Twitter. Yeah. And and, and the good thing is, uh, with with there's a number of people that I know artists wise on Twitter. They don't have a PR people that's answering their Twitter. Yes. Uh, you are. I do. I do. I enjoy uh, being very involved with my social networks, and I've made some great friends there. And, uh, in fact, that's one way you and I have stayed yeah. in touch yeah. throughout the years, and, and I've loved every minute of that. And also, I'm excited because, of course, I've got my new album on there, and the new album is called The Art of Dreaming is Believing. And The Art of Dreaming, I'm kind of excited about this. This is just the way life flows. Well, back when I was in the studio at Sunset Sound, uh, that's when I do remember, I was up on top of Mulholland Drive and I'm looking out at that great big view and I went, wow, the art of dreaming is believing. That's when I got that idea, but I never put it out until this hour. Right. Well, I got a call from, um, from Chuck Rhodes and he said, there's a, a, a music academy in Florence, Alabama, a guy down there, and they want to, it's a music academy, a fine arts academy within a high school. And he said, they've fallen in love with the art of dreaming. And this is their 10th year anniversary. And they want to use it as their theme song for 2023. And I went, you're kidding me. They said, no. And they're going to do a big show and have a, you know, a, the, the high school is going to have a symphony, you know, perform the song and get you to be the finale if you want to i said are you kidding me that's a huge honor i would absolutely love to because you know i've worked with a lot of kids and i love to help i like to help everybody kids can be anywhere from five to 55 or 105 and they don't forget it no they don't and so we did that and um, then the conductor from troy alabama the college came and conducted it and then we forged a friendship, and that's where these symphony shows are coming from. The, the people you touch with the things you do, just, and, and, and then they're gonna go on and on and keep you tied up, but I gotta say this, back a few weeks ago, back in March, mm -hmm. uh, we had a show uh, with Rhonda Vincent. Love Rhonda. And their, her opening act was Williamson Branch. Okay, yeah. And they were telling me, we have never forgotten 
working with Deborah out in Goodlettsville. Oh, my god! And it gosh. was a storm that night that yes, did not get... Yes, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but that was the just... biggest storm of the year. Yeah, they were just, you know... Little kids. And that was in 2007. Yeah. And now, Melody, the oldest, is married, wow. if I'm not mistaken. Wow. And the others are 16, and they just... And I, but they were telling me after the show, they said, we remember Deborah got us up on stage with yep. her. And and I said, "That's where does time go? <laughs> yeah. Really, where does the time go? Because when I think of them, I think of them as being just little kids, little cute little kids, right. but they were, they had the talent. And all they along. still do, and yeah. it's just amazing. But I wanted to let you know, they said, we have never forgotten her getting uh, us up here and singing with us. And, well, Please, and, uh, I love y'all too, so be so, sure give them a hug for me. But folks, go out to DebraAllen.com, check her website out, find her on all the social medias, follow us at OnFireConcerts.com, as well as all social medias. And uh, until next time, we'll see you then. Okay.